Hi everyone, I am Larry Belgrave. Welcome to the National Cultural Foundation's On Plain Air instructional video series. Today an exciting package awaits you as we look at materials that are used for painting outdoors in oils, watercolors, and acrylics here in beautiful and scenic Barbados. Let us now take a look at materials that are used for watercolors. First, you need an easel. This one is tilted at about 25 degrees angle. Now that allows you to control your washes as you lay them on your paper. Watercolor paper. Paper generally contains acid. And what happens over time, the acidic nature breaks down and blotches start to show through your paper. This is acid free. Masking tape is used to affix your paper to your drawing board. Your palettes are used for mixing your colors. We have various brushes here. The very large ones are used for laying large washes and painting over big areas. You can vary your brushes as you go along. The very small ones are used for very minute details and are generally used at the end of your painting. Now, paints. These are Winston Newton watercolors. They are um, artist quality. And um, there are a number of other brands on the market, but make sure you look for artist quality paints. Water, two cups. One is used for mixing your colors, and this one is always kept clean. The other one is always muddy because you're washing your brushes in this one. And don't forget your HP pencil for sketching. We're now gonna see the actual application of watercolors. I'm gonna start with a nice sketch. All right. This is going to be the clouds and sky. This is going to be your water and the sand. This is a beach scene. Before I actually apply my washes, I'm just going to wet my paper slightly. Lay just a wash of water. And once the paints are now applied, they tend to run loosely. I'm making some very bold tones. Once they are wet, you can always use some water to keep them nice and soft. Nice and soft. And it's always advisable to work from your background and come towards the foreground. I'm not going to work on the sea. Now the horizon line appears always to be much darker than the rest of the sea. So I'm going to add my dark tones. And those white blushes in there are your waves. I'm going to look at the trees. First, I'm going to apply my light tones with yellow. Spray them nice. It's yellow. Again, you have to identify your source of light. The light is falling from this direction. Everything in the path of the light will be much lighter than that which is being obscured. Now, for time's sake, I'm just going to lay my sun, my yellow opera. Okay. Just going to soften it with some water. Nice and soft. Now 
I'm now going to go back to my trees and I'm going to put some deeper tones in. So this is my deeper green. You're going to see it's going to run a bit out of my control. I'm going to add another tree here, going into this one. Making it really light, the yellows. And a little darker with my deeper greens. Okay, now that concludes our look at watercolors. We now turn our attention to oils. We need a very sturdy easel. This one stands vertically. Your canvas. Now this canvas is stretched around some strips of wood. We actually call these strips stretchers. It is stapled nicely around. Now canvas comes primed or unprimed. In case you have unprimed canvas, there is a priming medium that is called gesso. It is a white substance. You put at least three coats on top of that raw canvas. And what that does, it stops the oil paints from actually destroying the canvas. Next, we look at the palette. This is actually used for mixing your colors and so on. Your oil colors, there are various brands on the market. You can choose the one that you have a preference for. Brushes. Again, big brushes are for large applications and smaller brushes are for very minute details. Now these are called palette knives. They resemble what our masons use called a trowel and they apply the paint in a very thick impasto technique. This is turpentine and this is linseed oil. A combination of an equal amount of both of these can soften your colors and actually make the application much better. Turpentine alone can be used for washing your brushes. Always keep a piece of rag handy. You can wipe the paint away and also clean the palette knives. You will see this in a subsequent demonstration. And I'm going to mix about three tones. I'm going to apply my deeper tones first, my middle tones, and then my very light tones. I take this yellow, a little of that paint's gray, a little blue. I want to get a nice deep green. I'm going to go for a middle green. Not too much blue. And a very light one. So right now I have at least about three different tones. Now, this oil piece already in progress. I'm now going to lay some trees with the palette knife. Remember, it works like a trowel. And I'm applying my deeper tones first. Yeah. Then my middle tones will go on top. You can actually see the thickness of the paint. And uh, this takes much longer to be thoroughly dried as opposed to the actual brushwork. Now with oils, it is always best to put lean on, to put fat on top of lean, sorry. So your deeper tones, stronger tones, 
first. And your lighter tones after. Now the whole concept of lean and fat means that your underpainting is painting very thin and your overpainting is much thicker. This ensures that the um, fat, which is the thicker aspect of the paint, dries after the leaner part and it doesn't cause any cracking. Now this concludes our look at the materials used in oils. Last we look at the medium and the application of the acrylic. The acrylic is a man-made synthetic paint. It can be used on canvas like oils or on paper like watercolors. Don't forget your brushes, large brushes for large areas, your smaller brushes for more detailed work. You need your cup of water and a piece of rag, so washing and wiping your brushes. Now remember that the acrylic is a very fast drying medium and painting outdoors in sunlight like this will ensure that your paints will dry almost instantaneously. Remember there are some retarders on the market that can be used for prolonging the drying process. I'm now gonna apply some paint, some acrylic to my palette. And as you can see, I'm using some piece of recycled material as my palette, anything can be used. Just putting some paints here. And today is extremely hot. So I'm going to keep my acrylics moist. Just gonna overlay them with water before I actually begin my mixture. If you have a recyclable spray jug, it can be used to keep your paints moist also. And I'm going to do some mixing. It's a little blue and yellow to make green. Now with acrylic, you want to be building up your tones. So in some instances, you have to go over and over and over. Okay. Nice and soft. And this application is already stiff. It's already drying. Now, Some nice softer hues with the acrylic. Your deeper tones can be applied first and your lighter hues in an opaque sense. They just stay on top. Now this concludes our look at the acrylic. Just to recap, today we have looked at painting in the outdoors in oils, watercolors and acrylics. It is vitally important to always use good quality artist materials. A very sturdy easel is paramount, but just in case you don't have a sturdy easel, 
and you have a retractable one like this, a good old Barbadian big rock tied to this will keep it extremely sturdy. You may also need an art box. Now this can carry most of your materials except the easel, canvas and paper. Painting in the outdoors can present many challenges. For instance, it may rain. If it does, make sure you have a strong, sturdy umbrella. If you encounter extremely hot sun, a cap or a hat is good, just like the one I'm using. You may also encounter mosquitoes or sand flies. If you do, please make sure you have your repellents ready. All right, carry your sunblocks. Have lots of water to keep you hydrated. Now I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope it has given you the added impetus to get your materials, get out there and paint. I am Larry Belgrave. Thank you.